click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of machine design 1. We are right now learning about welded joints. Let us begin with the numerical, first numerical of welded joint and design of welded joints. As you can see in the screen, the problem statement is given. You'll find there is no statement, but the diagram is given. And that is what the statement is all about. Let us look at it. They say that design this particular weld joint for the given arrangement. There are a few important things that we need to draw out from this. The very first thing is the given load. It is 30 kN. They'll say this is the eccentric load and this is the eccentricity. No, it's not the eccentricity given. It is a certain distance given that is required to find out the eccentricity. So that is 300 mm of which we have been given the dimensions for the weld or the outline of the weld which is 150 by 100. Now there we need to decide the throat diameter and the throat dimension of the weld which is very essential. Now very first thing that we need to find out is the eccentricity and in order to find out the eccentricity we must find out the center of gravity of this only weld section because unless and until we find out the center of gravity it is difficult for us to find out the eccentricity of the given load. For that there is a small assumption. We know that weld joint has very small dimensions which are negligible as compared to the overall dimensions of the given body. So in that case we can consider this weld section the whole weld section as a single line. So it makes a C line for us. If you memorize your diagrams and memorize your if you memorize the formulae for finding out center of gravity of line segments from the subject of mechanics or engineering mechanics you will be able to find out the center of gravity for this particular c section which is a find of which is the kind of line so these are the major dimensions that we need to consider let us move ahead with it there is one more factor which has been given by them and that is nothing but the allowable value of shear stress which is given 90 newton per millimeter square now this is the value which is allowable for the weld material so with these inputs let us move ahead very first thing let us recollect is the failure mode of this weld section for the given case where the load is in the same plane as that of your weld there are failure occurring modes which is the first one direct shear and then comes the torsional shear so in short we need to consider the thickness for direct shear and we need to consider the thickness for torsional shear we know that direct shear will be given by this formula let us notate it by tau 1 and let us notate shear or the torsional shear by tau 2 the formula is very simple which is given by the torsional equations of which we need to find out the value of torque we need to find out the polar moment of inertia and we need to find out the maximum radius or the distance of the extreme fiber from the center of gravity so that the resultant shear can be found out using this particular empirical relation so basically we need to find out tau 1 tau 2 and the theta so in the next segment which we are going to undergo we are going to find out these values or basically the expressions which are required for these values. Before we move ahead, let us look at the moment of inertia thing first. Let us consider the directions of the shear stress, which is very important. This is how the weld segment is given. Like I said, let us say this is the center of gravity. So we need to find out this X bar as the distance, very first thing. Again. We know this relation from engineering mechanics that X bar will be given by this particular empirical relation. In our case, this particular value is going to be zero because there is no third dimension involved. And that's why there are only two dimension, one horizontal and one vertical dimension, which we are going to consider. After substituting the value, we can find out that X bar is somewhere around 28.5 millimeter. You can work out it for yourself. The formulae are already given in the description of engineering mechanics subject. So this is what the center of gravity X bar that lies somewhere here. Now there we need to find out the eccentricity which we are going to do in the latter stage. There comes the cross section of your weld. 
we know that this dimension is given by the base which is h and this is nothing but the throat dimension now this is what the well cross section looks like from the front view for which we need to find out polar moment of inertia now we know that polar moment of inertia will be given about this particular axis where this pane is kept in order to find it out we need to find out polar moment of inertia about y y axis and polar moment of inertia about x x axis let me also mention that this particular throat length t has a specific relation of 0 0.707 times the base so this is how the things do work let's come back to this diagram where we need to find out the maximum radius so from center of gravity till the extreme end of weld now it depends upon whether the center of gravity lies on this side or the opposite side we will have to find out the maximum radius since this portion is offset the maximum radius size comes on this side otherwise in the other state where this were kept separated with each other in that case this would have been the actual maximum radius but in our case since the dimension is 28.5714 the maximum radius is going to be this one now with that respect we know that the both these traces will act in this manner tau 1 and tau 2 we already have seen that this is the primary shear stress and this is the torsional shear stress we also have seen that they always have an angle theta between them which is same as that of angle made by the maximum radius. So in short, we will need to find out theta also and our maximum also. So from this diagram, we have got the basic idea of how the radius and theta are plotted. Now, as we have gone through different formulae which are required, very first and complicated thing that is moment of inertia we need to find out. Let us learn about the logic of it in this video and the solution part we will perform in the next video. Now, Ixx and Iyy are given by this formulae. These are well-known formulae. For the given C section, these formulae are into picture. You can refer to the logic from PSG 11.5. Somehow, let me quickly let you know what is the logic behind it. This is BD cube by 12, which is very famous formula for rectangle, plus this particular thing because it's an offset section. In this case, y bar square will have some value of thickness also. But in that case, since the thickness is a negligible quantity, t is very small dimension as compared to the overall dimensions of your given section. And that's why higher orders of t like t cube, t square can be neglected. That is first logic. Second logic is terms involving t square like y bar 1 square, which is this, can also be neglected because this particular term is going to give us an unknown expression solving which will be a difficult thing and that's why we are neglecting the terms of t cube and the terms of t square and that's why the formula will be reduced to a simpler version in the next video so there we finish with the important formulae which are associated with this particular numerical in the subsequent video we will be looking at solution of those formulae Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.